Türkiye'yi sarsan iki büyük depremin ardından hepimiz tarifsiz bir acı yaşıyoruz. Dünya çapındaki deprem uzmanları Kahramanmaraş depremlerini asrın felaketi olarak nitelendiriyor. Yer kabuğunun çatladığı görüntüleri görüyoruz. Gerçekten felaketin boyutu alışılmadık büyüklükte. Bir yandan ard arda yaşanan bu felaketlerin başka bir örneği olmadığı söyleniyor. Diğer yandan nükleer patlama şiddetiyle yapılan kıyaslamalar var. Türkiye'nin bir kayma yaşadığı bilgileri dolaşıyor. Marmara depremini tetikleyeceği konuşuluyor. Bugün tüm bu soruları konuğumuza yönelteceğiz. Kralı Abdullah Bilim ve Teknoloji Üniversitesi'nden Jeofizik Uzmanı Profesör Doktor Martin Mayi bizlerle. So Mr. Martin, thank you for joining us. As you know, there has been a disaster in Turkey. Magnitudes 7.7 and 7.6 earthquakes occurred at the same time, same places. What caused this? Are there any other examples like that in the world? Yes, good morning and uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, there are, of course, uh, examples worldwide for very large earthquakes. And uh, also this magnitude of 7.8, although it is very large. Um, it is not unusual. We see such earthquakes like every 10 years or so. Um, what is unusual that we had two earthquakes of the almost the same magnitude, uh, very close to each other within uh, nine hours. Um, and so that is unusual. We call these earthquake doublets. That means it's the second earthquake is not an aftershock of the first one, but it's itself a very large earthquake with this triggered by the first earthquake. So this doublet is very unusual. There is a shocking footage of a road that's shaking as it is floating. Can you interpret for us? What this suggests to me, this video footage, is that um, a uh, at this local site, liquefaction occurred. That means as the ground is shaking, And the, and, and the soil is water saturated from a lot of water. Mm -hmm. This water squirts out at the, uh, and comes to the surface and mm -hmm. actually makes the ground liquefy. It is sim uh, similar like if you stand with your barefoot at the beach, nice sandy beach, and you trample a little bit with your feet, then you see your feet quickly go into the sand and there's a lot of water and, and very wet sand coming out, right? So the shaking of very wet sediments makes actually the water come out and destabilize the ground. Um, so that's one possible explanation, but I, I wasn't really able to see the details in the video. So th that's why I can only speculate at this point. Now, um, after these shocks, what happened on East Anatolian Fault? This is, this is an excellent question. Um, The Eastern Anatolian Fault has produced large earthquakes for centuries, a millennia, maybe even million years. So, you know, human mankind has been affected by these earthquakes for the last, let's say, 10,000, 12,000 years. And so historic records very clearly document, you know, the big earthquakes in medieval times that occurred in the Eastern Anatolian Fault. Um, so what that means is such earthquakes will happen again in the next centuries to come and the next millennia to come. We cannot predict earthquakes. We cannot prevent them, but we have to prepare for future earthquakes. Now for, let's say, the next decades, the Earth crust, the Anatolian fault there will readjust. Mm -hmm. We have more aftershocks coming for the next month, for sure, maybe years. A magnitude six is always possible. Um, so as we basically come out of the current tragedy of the current disaster in the next few months and years, we have to prepare, we have to begin prepare immediately for the next big earthquake that could happen in 100 years or 50 years. Maybe not exactly at this place, but maybe further to the northeast, mm -hmm. um, where the fault uh, li links up with the North Anatolian fault. I, I, I say it's, it's like when you, when you're in sports, Uh, like basketball, tennis, or, or or football. It's like, you know, after the game, it's before the game. So we may have lost the game, um, but that means we need to prepare better for the next game to win. And do you think that these quicks could trigger North Anatolian fault? Yeah, this is an excellent question. Um, I think it's too early to say that. North Anatolian fault has ruptured from east to west, mm -hmm. 
in the 20th century, right? There was a first very large earthquake in 1939, which is actually not too far from, from the current ones, and then progressively ruptured towards the west. And the last big earthquake on the North, North Anatolian fault was 1999, the Izmit earthquakes, no? Izmit Adapazari. Um, the part of the North Anatolian fault that is underneath the Marmara Sea, that part has not ruptured for 250 years, roughly. Okay, So there were two big documented historic earthquakes in the Marmara Sea around 1740, 70, 60. I, I need to look up the, same, the exact numbers. And then west of the Marmara Sea was a big earthquake in 1912, the so-called Ganos, near the town Ganos. So this part in the Marmara Sea is is ready to rupture. I would say the likelihood that the two earthquakes of this week make earthquake rupture in Istanbul um, larger? No, I don't think so. But we will see in the next months to come and with like uh, scientific calculations if there has anything happened on a, on the North Anatolian force. Now, um, there have been some speculations that the earthquake may have moved Turkey three meters toward the west. Is that true? I would phrase it slightly differently. Um, so what ha happened, and, and there are now observations that, you know, at, at your surface, there are cracks, you see displaced roads, you see displaced uh, train tracks and so on. So th there is motion on the uh, East Anatolian fault of three, four, five meters. Yes, so that is correct. Um, but this displacement, this deformation remains fairly concentrated around the East Anatolian Fall. Now, uh, some experts said uh, that the quick had the power of 130 nuclear bombs. What do you think about that? Is it that big? Oh, I didn't make that calculation, I have to say. But uh, certainly, you know, magnitude 7.8 is, is a very, very strong earthquake because what really ma matters is how strong the shaking was and, and, uh, and the damage that came along with this earthquake. And and at that, what we know so far, this is a really, really severe earthquake on a global scale. Mm -hmm. You know, over the last decades, uh, we haven't had an earthquake of such damage and devastation. These quakes are among, as you said as well, are among the most powerful earthquakes. Can you compare this quake to the magnitude 9.0 earthquake that happened in Japan in 2011? If you just speak about magnitude, magnitude 7.8 was the first main shock. Japan was 9.0. The magnitude scale is logarithmic. A magnitude 9 earthquake is about 10 times more powerful than the magnitude 8 earthquake. The earthquake in Japan happened out in the ocean, right? So the epicenter was far away from land and it ruptured a different tectonic system, a subduction uh, zone, and it created a tsunami. In Japan, the damage and the devastation and the life loss was mostly by the tsunami wave and not by the shaking. Yes, it was a bigger magnitude, but in Turkey, the earthquake occurred on land. I mean, underneath the city, right? Uh, almost. And so the, the damage and the shaking, or the shaking and hence the damage felt was much um, bigger in some sense and, of course, much more destructive. 